Last Thursday, SpaceX launched the largest rocket ever built from the Boca Chica, Texas, spaceport. The Starship spacecraft, intended for future Mars missions, took off from the launch pad, but unfortunately exploded mid-flight with no crew on board. Prior to having launch permission, a lengthy bureaucratic battle over the environmental impact of the rocket considered factors like endangered birds, historical monuments, exhaust, and construction noise. However, the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, failed to anticipate the impact of dust. In fact, the launch resulted in a significant amount of sand and ash-like particulate matter, heavier debris being kicked up, which spread further than expected. Residents and researchers are now working to evaluate the impact on local communities, including the effects on health, habitat, and wildlife, including endangered species. Due to this incident, the FAA has grounded the Starship Super Heavy launch program while the results of the mishap investigation are being evaluated. How did the FAA respond to these consequences? What actions will SpaceX have to take to resume additional Starship flights? Let's learn more about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. This was not in the SpaceX plan. On April 16th, Elon Musk acknowledged in a public Twitter Spaces discussion that the Starship vehicle with 33 engines was comparable to a box of grenades, and it was unlikely to reach orbit, but likely to explode. However, Musk and SpaceX did not anticipate the launch pad would be destroyed, nor did they expect the particulate matter to fall on nearby areas like Port Isabel and South Padre Island, causing damage to businesses and homes. During the test flight, more than two dozen rocket engines fired simultaneously, propelling the massive Starship rocket into space and causing over 6,000 metric tons of force to hit the launch gantry in the ground below. These areas are kept clear of people for safety reasons, but the impact was still unusual compared to a typical launch at other sites. According to Dave Cortese of the Sierra Club, the concrete posed a risk to fuel storage tanks located adjacent to the launch pad. In an environmental assessment completed to obtain a launch license, SpaceX informed the FAA and other agencies that in the event of an anomaly, debris would be limited to a 700-acre area surrounding the launch site, translating to about one square mile of debris field with debris traveling about three-quarters of a mile away from the site. However, following the explosion, people in Port Isabel reported broken windows and shaking homes due to the particulate matter that coated their homes, schools, and land. Researchers and residents shared that particulate matter also fell on South Padre Island. It remains unclear if the ash and sand-like particulate matter is dangerous to touch or breathe in and what impact it could have on soil health. According to Lavi Ohana, who reported locally on the launch, it was also one of the loudest she'd ever witnessed with shock waves that felt like getting punched repeatedly. It's unclear what the full impact of the particulate emissions from the SpaceX launch will be until comprehensive measurements are taken and samples evaluated. Particulate emissions are regulated under the Federal Clean Air Act and Texas state law as they're associated with respiratory issues and considered a high-priority pollutant by the EPA. The potential health impact depends on factors like exposure time, quantity, particle size, and content. Environmental engineer Eric Roche has expressed concerns about the environmental analysis conducted by the FAA and SpaceX, stating that the possibility of a widely dispersed plume of emissions was not disclosed during the initial permitting and approval process. Following the test flight, roads were damaged, cordons were closed, preventing researchers from immediately assessing damage that may have occurred in nearby wildlife refuge areas. This delay may result in evidence of harm to endangered species being removed from the site before regulators can assess it. Getting back to the test flight, Elon Musk tweeted April 21, 2023, that they had started building a massive water-cooled steel plate three months prior to the launch to go under the launch mount. But that plate wasn't ready in time, and they wrongly assumed that the Fondag concrete would make it through one launch based on static fire data. Musk stated they could be ready to launch again in one to two months. To be asked what was necessary for SpaceX to conduct another test flight or launch of the Starship Super Heavy from Boca Chica, Texas, 
The FAA responded that a return to flight would require them to confirm that any system, process, or procedure related to the mishap would not impact public safety. At present, the FAA and Texas Regional Office of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service are still gathering information and can't yet provide answers about the environmental impact of the launch on Thursday. SpaceX did not respond to a request for comment. The FAA shared via email that the explosion triggered an anomaly response plan, which is part of a 2022 programmatic environmental assessment conducted by the company along with state and federal agencies. Additionally, SpaceX has additional environmental mitigations that they must complete before launching again. The FAA noted that the plan was triggered by debris entering adjacent properties. Once SpaceX completes the task on the plan and the mitigations, they have to request to the FAA to amend the launch license to obtain clearance for another test flight. Jared Margolis, an attorney with the Center for Biological Diversity, believes that the FAA requirements will be minimal and easy for the company to meet, but ultimately ineffective in protecting local residents' well-being and endangered species. He said, we're not against space exploration or the company. But while we are looking to the stars, we should not readily sacrifice communities, habitats, and species. To clear the FAA hurdle, SpaceX must closely examine the telemetry data collected during Starship's test flight. This much is clear. Of the 33 engines that powered the rocket's first stage, flight video reveals at least eight failed to fire in a February 9th static fire test during which they were ignited with the rocket anchored to the ground, 31 of the 33 worked as planned. Now, that may be true when 31 engines are firing, but not a mere 25. Had the Starship's engines worked as planned last week, first stage would have separated and fallen back to Earth at a three-minute point in the flight, leaving nine engines on the second stage to carry the rest of the spacecraft to space. Instead, it was at that point the rocket went into some uncontrolled tumble that lasted for a full and harrowing minute. At the end of that minute, the rocket blew up. The explosion itself was no accident, and a post shortly after the flight ended, SpaceX announced its flight termination system, FTS, essentially a self-destruct mechanism to prevent danger to people or structures on the ground, destroyed both stages of the rocket. Starship's not remotely alone in being equipped with an FTS. Indeed, the FAA requires that system in all rockets before they're allowed to fly. SpaceX is not pretending that solutions to all the problems that arose on April 20th will come soon, and after action reports and repairs like the one the company's faced with, it's typically slow, painstaking affairs. For now, SpaceX will keep its head down trying to solve the problems, making the repairs, satisfying the FAA, which holds the ultimate leash on future Starship flights. There are many who continue to believe the company has the wherewithal to do that and that Starship has a bright future. This was a test flight, says astrophysicist Pascal Ehrenfreund, a professor at George Washington University Space Policy Institute. During the development of a disruptive launcher, setbacks are anticipated. The investigations will reveal when the next test flight will be possible. There will certainly be a next test flight. And hopefully, Starship becomes a commercial reality. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.